Hello world, today at Dino Mega Studios I'm going to walk you through getting started using my inventory and idle blueprint system. Since there are many moving parts to this system, I'm going to break this information up into a few different videos. For today's video, we're going to create this pinata that when you interact with it, will drop candy the player can pick up off the ground. The player can then use these items to add an inventory slot to their bag. We are going to accomplish all these goals using the included item, interact, and inventory systems. But before we get started, there are a few prerequisites. First, go ahead and open up a copy of the inventory and item blueprint system, and then navigate to the example map. And for today's project, we're going to need a mesh for our pinata, as well as a mesh for our piece of candy in the world. And we're also going to need an icon for our candy in our inventory. Make your own or see the description for a link to download the ones I'm using in this video. When you're ready, go ahead and import your assets into a folder in your project. I'm going to create a folder inside my Blueprints Interactables called Pinata. And this is where I'm going to keep everything. Let's get started. Let's start off with making the interactable Pinata. Go ahead and navigate to the Blueprints Interactables folder and create a child blueprint of BP Interact. Name this new child blueprint BP underscore Pinata. I'm going to move mine into my Pinata folder. Now go ahead and open up the BP Pinata blueprint. Let's first set our static mesh to the pinata that we just imported. Now let's go ahead and drop this actor in our world and see how it looks. Press play and see if you could run up to it and get the message to interact with it when you get close. If you do not see this message, you either did not create a child blueprint or the interact range is too small to interact with on your object. If you see the press E message, excellent, you're ready to continue to the next part. Now our pinata is not going to be very fun sitting on the ground, so let's go ahead and make a place to hang it from. And we'll also go ahead and create a physics constraint. This way we can add the effect that it's swinging. Go ahead and make the physics constraint a child of your scene by dragging and dropping it onto it. Then from the details panel of the physics constraint, for component name 1, set it to static mesh. And this is just a reference to our pinata static mesh. We'll go ahead and position your physics constraint and adjust the settings to it to your liking. I'm also going to add a cable to mine so I can have a visual indicator of it. Also make sure you set simulate physics on for your static mesh. It looks like it's working but the cable is not connected and that's because we still haven't set up the cable properly. Head back to your blueprint and then under attach N2 for the cable, go ahead and enter static mesh. And now we get the expected result. Although our cable does look a little short, so let's go ahead and fix that up. I'm going to resize the ceiling first. And then I'll adjust the cord length. Go ahead and tweak the settings until you're happy with how everything looks. For me, that was a cable length of 200. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I went ahead and added another static mesh as a child of my physics constraint, just to have a little thing at the top that it looks like it's swinging from. Next, we want to spawn candy when we press E on the pinata. And to do that, we need to create our custom logic. Go ahead and open up the BP pinata and head over to the event graph. The heavy lifting is already done for you. We just need to tap into the right event. Hover over the function section on the left and you'll see a drop down. This is for overriding. From this drop down, select action. This action event is from our BP interactable parent. And what we're doing here is just adding our own logic. And just to make sure everything is working properly, go ahead and hook it up to a print string. Then go ahead and test it. Make sure you see your print string text when you go up to the object and hit E. Now our goal here is to spawn candy when you press E. And to do that, we need to spawn an actor. So go ahead and pull off from your execution pin and select spawn actor from class. For the class, we're going to want to select interactable item. And this right here, we need to enter in an item row name. And to do that, we need to add it first. So head on over to your Blueprints Variables Data Tables folder and open up DT Items. And then go ahead and add a new item. For this item, set the row name to Candy and then fill out the rest of the data. When you get to the icon, do a search for Candy. And this will find our icon that we imported. Do the same thing for the static mesh. Don't worry about the item on use for now, we'll come back to this. Just go ahead and save it and then head back to the blueprint. And then enter candy in as our item row name. And then hook up the actor transform. And then let's see what happens. Well, as you can see, a piece of candy came out. Let's go ahead and spice it up. And to do that, we'll just add some randomness through an impulse. Drag from the return value of our spawn actor and select Add Impulse Static Mesh.
Then break the impulse input. For X and Y, we're going to use a random float and range with a value of negative 500 to 500. I'm going to manually set Z to 500 and also make sure velocity change is enabled. Let's see how this looks. Oh, as you see, we're, we're shooting out candy, so that's a little too much. So let's go ahead and adjust that. Go ahead and find the value that works right for you for the impulse. For me, this ended up being 350. Now ah, that looks good, that's what I want. But that's still not very exciting. We still wanna get some sort of uh, interaction out of our pinata when we click E. So I wanna make a kind of push in a random direction when we do that. And to do that, let's head on back over to the blueprint. And we're just gonna add an impulse to our static mesh pinata. Basically the same thing we just did for the candy, but with some slightly different values. So I'll go ahead and hook up and add impulse to your static mesh. And then for the impulse, Let's set the random to between 100 and 350. And then for the Z, we'll set it to 100. And make sure you select velocity change on this one too. And let's go ahead and see how that looks. So now when we press E, you can see it actually moves the pinata and spits out candy. There we go, we're getting there. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Let's just add a little bit more randomness to the number of items that spawn each time we click E. And to do that, we can just use the simple for loop. And I'm going to hook the last index up to a random integer in range and set it between 1 and 3. This way, each time we hit it, we'll get between 1 and 4 pieces of candy popping out of it. I'm going to go ahead and tweak the stand that he's connected to right now just to make a little bit more room to fly around. Okay, so now we want to do something when we actually use this candy that we're picking up. And to do that, we tap into this item on use field on the data table. And there are a number of examples here for you, like this one right here, add inventory slot. Let's go ahead and see what that does. So now when we use piece of candy, you'll see an inventory slot was added. And that'll stay till the end of the game session. And this is part of the actual code. This is already programmed for you. So you can tap into that. You can also tap into some of the loot boxes if you want. Or if you want to make your own, you just go ahead and make a sub of this child right here, this component. Let's go ahead and name it AC underscore pinata loot. And I'm just going to move it to this folder here with all the other ones. For this, we do another override. This time we do it on the use item. And when we use this item, we're just going to print out a string so you can see how it works. Go ahead and select it, new data table and save. And when you eat a piece of candy, you'll see it says do something at the top and it consumes the candy down at the bottom right. So this is where you'll tie in your own custom logic for whatever your consumable is gonna do. And there we have it, there's our pinata. I'll come out with some more videos here in the next couple days to weeks to go over the rest of these topics in here. And if you have any questions about today's video or my system, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and good luck with your game. As you see, we're, we're shooting out candy.